Hello and welcome to Q Sports. I'm Umutu Gajaga. Thank you very much for joining us on tonight's show. Three Gambians have attended a two-day women in sports seminar held in Guinea last week. What was the outcome of that seminar? We'll be talking about that on tonight's Q Sports. Also, the Gambian national women's volleyball team has a new coach. We will tell you his name and what his role is going to be. Also on Q Sports, we'll be looking at a roundup of African football, especially in the CAF Champions League. This and many more on tonight's show. Welcome and thank you for joining us. This is Q Sports and I am Umudu Gajaga. First, we are going to talk about women in sports administration. Joining me in the studio is someone who has won six national league titles, five Super Cups and Knockout Cups. She was also the captain of the Gambia Armed Forces Volleyball Women's Team. And also at regional level, she won bronze for Gambia at the Zone World Championship Qualifiers in Cape Verde. She is now an executive member of the Gambia Volleyball Federation. She is arguably one of the most outstanding female sports personalities in the country. Mariama Sol is my guest in the studio. Mar Mariama, welcome. Thank you so much, Gajaga. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to get you in the studio and we'll be talking about fresh from the women's seminar that you attended in Guinea um, recently. You returned not long ago and this is meant to promote women's sports administration and also how to develop women in sports in general. Um, tell us about it. Thank you so much. So first of all, I want to thank the Gambia National Olympic Committee for giving me this rare opportunity to attend such a big event in, in Guinea-Conakry. So uh, the seminar in, in Guinea-Conakry was basically to look at women's, uh, uh, women in sports, the challenges that we face and also how to develop women participation in an administration. So the, uh, we have seven representatives, seven countries. That is the zone two. You have the Gambia, you have Guinea-Bissau, you have Guinea-Conakry, you have Sierra Leone, you have Kidvad. Yeah, so those were the uh, representatives in, in Guinea-Conakry. It was uh, a very interactive and uh, interesting session. We discussed a uh, lot of issues, and these issues are basically going to be uh, sent to the ANOCA, that is the National Olympic uh, Committees of in, in Africa. So they are going to look at these uh, recommendations that we have given at the seminar, and then they will draw a, uh, a policy with regards to it. In terms of the recommendations that you've given at the seminar, what are some of these? So one of them is the issue of, so if you look at the theme of this year's uh, seminar, it's, sent, it's uh, empowering women uh, through sports. So if we are saying the right to participation, it, 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 uh, for us it's a right to participate. So if you're saying we have to be empowered to uh, actually realize our, our rights, I think this is one of the violations that uh, we, f uh, we, we, we face. So one of the recommendations that we give is that uh, next time that when we are having seminars, we, we don't have to look at, uh, we don't have to tailor it down to us women being been empowered. We, we, we have been empowered in so many ways. Now it is the time for us to be given the platform to actually realize our potentials. And the other uh, thing that we give is the issue of uh, uh, sensitization advocacy. I think this is uh, one of the things that is lacking in our societies. We see that uh, our society, we have a very conservative society where women are seen to be uh, caretakers of the home and not to be involved in sports. So we need a lot of advocacy in the society and also the uh, one of the things that too we do is the involvement of media in broadcasting women's sports. We, we see that uh, women's sports are very, very uh, lacking and very unpopular. And one of the reasons is the lack of the participation of media in broadcasting uh, uh, women's sports. So these are one of the recommendations that we give in the seminar. In terms of also your interaction with other colleagues who are also into women's sports administration, um, how has it been like um, interacting with them? What are some of the challenges, um, comparing them with the challenges that you face in the Gambia? Are they that similar? Yeah, they, they, are, they are similar. If you look at the challenges that we face here in Gambia, it cut across all uh, 
in all the regions, in all the sub-regions that we have. So uh, I've interacted with icons, with, with great uh, sport personalities. Some of them were champions, even in conten continental uh, uh, levels. So it was great. But if you look at the challenges that we faced in the Gambia, it's similar in other countries, like the issue of social, cultural, and religion uh, challenges that we face here, the issue of finance, they are all the same, yeah. Okay, I, in terms of Gambia, when you look at the broad spectrum, you've talked about um, the cultural challenges, um, religion, and also um, socially. Um, in fact, some people think sports is just only meant for men, men. not women. Absolutely. But um, people like you have proven that, you know, mm -hmm. basically women can go all the way, they can win medals, mm -hmm. and they can break that barrier. Um, what do you think need, needs to change on the ground? Uh, there are a lot of things that need to be changed, especially on the issue of the social, cultural, and also the religion aspect of it. I know if I have to talk religion, some people are so uh, sensitive when, uh, when it comes to the issue of religion. But I believe these are issues that are really, really affecting women's participation in sports. So if you look at uh, uh, the religion is telling you there are certain way that a woman has to dress. So in the field, probably the way the woman is to dress and the way the Islam or other religion are expecting a woman to dress is uh, kind of difficult. So these are one of the challenges. And also early marriage is also a challenge in which we have to look at in the society. Women, are, uh, girls in the country are sent to marriage at a very early age. Sometimes you go, you're married to a man who is the, who does not have the understanding of what the importance of women participation in, in sports. So these are the things. So one of the things, if we can really, really uh, have to work on uh, developing or increasing the participation of women in sports is sensitization and advocacy in the society. At a personal level, uh, how were you able to stum all through this? Um, your former captain of the Gambia national uh, volleyball team, that is the armed forces team, you won series of success as an earlier mentor in your citation. And also, you know, if you look at your involvement in sports administration, at a very young age, you became a, a member of the Volleyball Federation representing the players, and now you're an executive member uh, at family level and also culturally uh, what how is this scene like and <laughs> how did you come to <laughs> pass through all these tests well i i must say i'm also one of the people that face the the issue of uh, family pressure and also the social cultural uh, uh, aspect of uh, women participation so i can remember when i started uh, sports uh, this is because of the peer influence. Most of the uh, most of my colleagues were athletes. Some of them, uh, it's Sadi Siso, who is now the coordinator of women uh, football at the GFF. And you also have Jenna Mamanja, who once participated in the Olympics in 2008. So th it wa it wasn't uh, easy for me to start. I convinced my mom several times to allow me to do sports, but it was like, no, no, no. You have to think about other things, like getting married. And so, so I was just that strong-headed girl who just uh, has to go in for the things that she wants and that is why I'm here yeah okay um, in terms of also the um, development aspects of women in sports administration yourself you talked about Sini um, there are others who are referees there are others but mainly they're in these executive positions but not the top top ones will there come a time where we will be like okay the president of the Gambia Volleyball Federation is a woman, okay, the president of the Gambia Football Federation, or the secretary general, some of the most influential positions. I know you have to start somewhere, but do you see this happening in, in a few years down the line? Yeah, I see it happening. I see it happening. I think one of the challenges that we are also faced with is uh, that athletes here or, or women, sport, uh, sport women, don't really involve in academia. And this is one of the challenges. Yes, in as much as we want women to participate or women to, to uh, get involved in sport administration, we want competent women to be, uh, to be uh, in those uh, portfolios. You cannot just send someone just because the person is a woman to be the president of a certain association or a secretary general. We know the work involved. It has a lot of writing and also a lot of talking to do. So yeah, I'm seeing that happening. I'm, I'm really seeing that happening. Yeah, there are a lot of, lot of amazing women. You have uh, people like Sini Sisoho. She's doing amazingly well. And you also have Ajara Samba. She's also great. And on the side of volleyball, you also have Senawe Tambedo. She's also doing very well. Uh, the likes of Kumbajao, they are all great. And I'm seeing 
sports uh, being controlled by women. Let's talk about the issue of capacity building. It's hugely important. You cannot just rely on the fact that I've been a former player of the Gambia. I've captained the national side um, five, ten years ago, so I should be considered for a position. It, it has to be based on competence, which is hugely important. And on the women's aspect, uh, do you see them um, taking that role that they want to build their capacity? No, 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 no. Women really. They are not really involved. In as much as we want to push women to take up uh, leadership roles, they f you know, try to lag behind. I, uh, just recently in our district, it's supposed to be four of us that should go, but uh, only two of us uh, ended up going because the other people were like, okay, it's a seminar, so it's not like uh, to go and play sports, it's going to talk and all that. So they were reluctant and they could not go. So women, uh, before we are empowered, I think we need to empower ourselves. We need to know that this is important for us and we need to take up the challenge. We should not wait for our main counterpart to start telling us, okay, do this, do that, and do that. Be ready for yourself. Know what you want and you go in for it. Gambia has been doing very well in volleyball, um, in the male category and in the women category as well. Looking at that success story, is it down to the fact that the people engaged in the sports are determined enough, they want to change it themselves, or is it basically a whole um, support coming from the community? I think it's of all. You have uh, players who are so, so determined to, to change the narratives, but you equally have uh, a very supportive uh, federation backing them. So uh, at our federation level, we do everything possible, sometimes at our own expense, to see that players really get what they want. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's uh, a joint thing that we, we are actually doing. It's not only the, the, the athletes being determined, but I assure you too, the athletes are so determined to, to, to see themselves there. But equally, the, the society is contributing, especially uh, GNSC. GNSC has been helping a lot in the issue of uh, the, the, the beach volleyball, uh, co our beach volleyball competitions. We, I think last year we, we attended, not year before last, we attended uh, roughly all the competitions and that is where we were able to be the champions of Africa. When you look at Gambian sports in general terms, virtually the athletes are hugely underdeveloped in terms of um, their training, the infrastructure is not good enough and the motivation in terms of financially um, is hugely. Gambia has one of the poorest athletes in the world. You can play up to national oh. level and you still wouldn't be able to have fare to even travel to do a match practice, which is very, very sad. Um, how do we co overcome some of these challenges, especially when it comes to women in, in sports? The government should take it as they are all. I think that is the first step that we have to uh, look at. The government sometimes it's as if the federation, the national federations, owns the team. But the real, uh, uh, the real thing is that if if we travel outside, we carry the name the Gambia. It's not any national federation name that we carry. So the government should really, really involve in sports. Sports should be a means of earning living. It shouldn't be just for passion. Well, people like me is the passion that drives me in it. But then you have a lot of people that want to take it as a career. But the lack of encouragement and support from our officials is really discouraging. You, you can see a lot of, lot of good talents here. We have talents. When we go outside, when we play, people are like, OK, so these people too exist in Gambia. And you look at them, their capacity, their living conditions are so, so bad. I take example of myself, you know, having to play all these competitions, you know, traveling in and outside the Gambia. I am still the poor girl. So it, it should have at least, I should have been in an el another level compared to my other, other counterparts in other, other countries. When I met some of the women in, in the seminar, I, I was so envious of them. They are so amazing and their living condition is so perhaps, yeah. Living conditions should pop. Um, should it also be um, the commercialization of sports? Because when you go to other countries, yes, you have the government supporting in infrastructure, in helping um, facilitate the competitions, and also helping the national teams in travel and all of that. But you have also very strong crops who have the financial backing of companies and all of that. Um, do you think uh, the commercialization of sports in this country would help? Yeah, it, it will definitely help. It will really help. But 
In everything, I think the government should first of all put in, in something so that it will encourage other sectors co to come in play. If you look at the issue of infrastructure, it's the government uh, rule that to, should develop it, but we have very, very poor infra uh, infrastructure here. So it should be com uh, commercialized. Uh, that is only the, uh, the time that people will get. But again, let me remind you of this. You, s you have companies that are that are not so 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 good with regards to taking care of uh, players. You have people who abuse this at least. Instead of paying them good amount of money or you taking care taking good care of them, you know, at the end of the day, it's as if you need you the athlete need the administrators more than they need you. So these are also the difficulties that we are going to face. It's about giving and take. We should respect the athletes because without the athletes, there will be no sport administrator. In your seminar. Have you spoken to some of your colleagues about um, certain things that they are doing right in their country and um, they get to a certain level and results are coming positive, um, which the Gambia can learn from? Well, uh, I've spoken to some of them, especially this lady in, in Mali. She's doing a great job there. She has these uh, kids that she is mentoring, which equally I am doing here. But then I was trying to tell her about the funds. But she also made a recommendation on the on the seminar that one of the f uh, challenges they face is the issue of uh, finance, in which Anuka said they're going to look at it and then uh, solve it. But I think basically we are we are all suffering from the same thing, and the solution to it, I really uh, can't tell. But it's difficult. Uh, finally, on this particular topic. Um what are some of the challenges that women in sports and sports administration in the Gambia faced during this pandemic? It has been long. We're still talking about when is the volleyball season going to start? When is the football season going to start? Um, we virtually still on, on a hold. Yes, people are casually playing football. People are casually enjoying themselves, but not officially having the league started, whether it's football, volleyball or basketball. How has it affected um, women's participation in sports? Uh, one of the things is uh, we, most of the women, especially me, have lost form now. <laughs> it, it's like since, since the pandemic started, it's only a few times that I go to the beach and then train, but then at the end of the day, I have to just be at home. So one of the, uh, the effects that it has on us, especially women, is the issue of losing, the, uh, losing form. And also most, most of these uh, women, to, uh, women that are involved in sports too, who we are uh, at the verge of being enrolled in certain clubs, did not uh, we are not able to have it because of the pandemic they should wait until this coming season which we don't know when it's going to start until this com uh, this season that they have to develop themselves again and then it really affected us a lot that's very very difficult and we hope we get out of this pandemic as soon as possible this is the first edition of q sports in 2021. I forgot to mention in the beginning, maybe I'm just being carried away with events of 2020, <laughs> but uh, we are going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the Gambia women's national team, that is volleyball, has a new coach, an Italian, and we'll tell you who the person is and what his role is going to be. Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is Q Sports and we're talking about women in sports administration. But this time we'll be talking about the Gambia women's national volleyball team. Has a new coach and his name is Roberto Fenelli, the new head coach of the Gambia women's volleyball team. But he is going to take his role in April later this year. And this was discussed at a press conference which was held yesterday at the Semega Jane Hall at the Sarakunda East football field. And the one who is with me in the studio, Mariama Sau, attended the press conference and I'm going to engage her to talk about having a professional coach for the senior women's volleyball team, how important is it? And the information that we got from the 
Gambia Volleyball Federation official Facebook page is that the Italian will commence work in April 2021 and he'll be supported by his backroom staff from Italy and the Gambia. And he has agreed a four-year deal with an option to extend. Mariamo, huge development for women's volleyball, the national team. Absolutely. It's, it's a great, great initiative. And we really... Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, His Excellency uh, Tijan JT for this great, great initiative. And what made it even special is that not even for him to look at uh, volleyball first, but then the issue of having to look at women uh, volleyball, uh, uh, the, the women volleyball team, is what made it special. And yeah, it's a huge success. How do you think it's going to change um, how volleyball is played? Yes, uh, you used to have our coaches before, but to have somebody who is at the top level changing the game for the better? Uh, I talked about it yesterday, and then I think it's very important. We have great, great coaches here. They have, you know, led us in so many competitions, and we have have a lot of positive, positive outcomes in, in those competitions. But then having to have a nation, uh, an international coach, I think is an added, uh, added advantage on us, not only the female team, but equally the coaches. Uh, one of the things that we lack, especially uh, on the side of our coaches, is the international experience and the standard of international volleyball. When we go out, we see how uh, other players, the way they act, the way they train, the way they warm up, even their warm up is different from ours. And one of the causes of this warm up is because of uh, uh, the infrastructure we have here. We play on a concrete floor, but if you go internationally, you play, play on a synthetic floor, which is different. So there are a lot of, lot of things that, a lot of positive things that I believe the, the, the having of this international coach will change, uh, especially the participation of women. I th uh, we participated, I think the last uh, international outing that we went, it was around 2016 or so. So uh, one of the packages that uh, it's, in, uh, it's involved is that women will participate internationally. And then, you know, it's going to be a great one. Yeah. Going to be a great one. And for more on that with Coach Isu, Babu Karsi was there, he covered it. We will get more in this report. The move came less than five months after JTS' appointment as a sports goodwill ambassador for the country by the government through the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Tijan JTS' first intervention is in volleyball after it was announced recently that the former Scorpion midfielder has secured a volleyball coach for the Gambia's female volleyball national team. The president of the Gambia Volleyball Federation by Dudu Jalo thanked Tijan Jete for coming to the aid of volleyball, saying the coach secured from Italy is a huge boost for the Gambia, as the Italian Volleyball League is among the best leagues in the world. There has been a lot of development in our centers of young people, both male and female. And the results of our female and male volleyball teams have been great, even at the international level. But we have been doing this without a highly qualified coaching staff within the country. The coaches that we have in the Gambia are not bad because they have gone up to level two FIVB. But really, we know if you want to get to the very high level on, of international competition, you need a more technical and more qualified um, caliber of, uh, of coach to be, with, to be in the midst of these good coaches that we have in our country. For Tijan, his appointment as a goodwill sports ambassador for the country is a huge tax and wants to do his best to see that all sports practice in the country move forward. Mange look forward to the Japan Volleyball Federation and other federations in Gambia. And finally on Q Sports, we are going to bring you some roundup of African football news. The 2021 Total Calf Confederation Cup second round preliminary round will be concluded this week and when the second leg matches will be placed on the 5th to the 6th of January. And the aggregate winners will qualify to the playoffs facing relegated sides from the total CAF Champions League second round preliminaries. And the playoffs draw is set to take place at the CAF headquarters in Cairo, Egypt on the 8th of January 2021.
With that, we say thank you very much for watching this broadcast. Until we come your way next week, keep on sporting and bye for now. Have a wonderful night.